Good afternoon. We would like to take this time and welcome everyone to our unveiling of the 2024 CARIFTA team. The BVI Athletics Association is really happy that everyone is here joining us today. This is another milestone, another team, and we're really excited. Um, I'd like to just open the afternoon with a quick word of prayer, and then we'll go straight into the specifics of the press conference. Um, you can stay where you're at, and let's open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this blessed day. We thank you for another opportunity to give you thanks and praise for your almighty hands that cast so many gifts and blessings amongst each and every one of us. We thank you for this team. We thank you for their support from their parents to the coaches, to the officials, to all those who have encouraged and supported them. And we thank you for the opportunity as an association to be here to support them and help them grow and develop. We are excited about this team and we just ask you right now to take them and help them to have much successes. And we give you all thanks for everything during this time today. In the blessed name of your son, Yeshua, I pray, amen. amen. Thank you again for being here. Joining me this afternoon, we have Honorable Shari De Castro, the Minister of Education and Youth Affairs and Sports. We have Mr. Lloyd Black, the General Secretary from the BVI Olympic Committee. We have our president, Mr. Steve Augustine, president of the BVI Athletic Association, and yours truly, Mrs. Stephanie Ross Penn, the general secretary for the association. Again, we're here today to unveil our 2024 CARIFTA team. This year, the team will be traveling to the Spice Island, the island of Grenada, to compete with over 25 other countries, they will be appearing at the premier track and field event in the Caribbean, none other than the Carifta Games. Without further ado, I'm going to allow the minister to give us remarks, after which we will have remarks from the, Mr. Black from the Olympic Committee, and then we would have remarks from Mr. Augustine in that order. So I'm gonna pass the mic to the minister, and we will have our remarks, and then we will reveal our team. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to be here uh, with uh, the amazing folks from the executive of the BV Athletics Association. Uh, from the Ministry of Education, we've been doing our part to ensure that we support uh, athletics in the territory. And it truly is, uh, it gives me great joy uh, to be here today uh, at this amazing unveiling so that we could see uh, the cadre of athletes that will be representing the Virgin Islands in Grenada. Uh, last year, of course, we would have had an amazing time in the Bahamas, and I'm looking forward to seeing all the amazing talent that will take place in Grenada. We've been having some discussions uh, from the Ministry of Education in terms of how we continue to support athletics uh, in the territory. Uh, one of the things we did last year is that we created uh, line item in the budget uh, to be able to give contributions uh, to sporting organizations. And last year, we would have had the opportunity after multiple meetings with BVIAA, as well as uh, continuous discussions with athletes in terms of understanding exactly what the needs are. So we created a formal mechanism uh, where associations and federations are able to submit their annual budget uh, to the government uh, a year prior uh, to, the, well, the year before the passing of the budget. And I'm happy to say that last year, BVIAA was able to benefit from a $50,000 annual contribution uh, from the government of the Virgin Islands. And truly, I know that went a long way in assisting uh, the mandate of the Athletics Association. Uh, we've had significant discussions since then, and we were presented once again um, with the annual budget from BVIAA and a request for sums from government. I'm happy to say that based on our discussions and negotiations, um, government, through its budget for 2024, has committed $100,000 to the BVI Athletics Association. <laughs> and certainly I know that it has 
uh, and will go a very long way in terms of the plans that the executive has in store uh, for the athletes this year. Um, overall, we are extremely committed uh, to ensuring that we support athletics in the territory, and we look forward to continued discussions. Additionally, um, I would, for the first time, announce and give more details later um, that given my discussions as minister, I remember very clearly the first trip that I went on uh, was the Commonwealth Games, and I was able to dialogue with our athletes and really get an understanding of their needs. And based on those discussions, uh, we had multiple meetings and discussions since then in terms of how we support sports at all levels. So from the grassroots, uh, through the associations and federations, to the YAS in terms of the after school and summer camps, as well as additionally to the, to the athletes themselves or elite athletes who are representing the Virgin Islands on the global stage. And I'm happy to say that through cabinet, uh, we were able to pass um, an official measure by which annually uh, elite athletes would be able to receive funding from the government of the Virgin Islands. It is, it is a significant step. Uh, it is one thing to apply for a grant and be able to compete for funding. And it's another thing to have funds allocated in the budget uh, once you meet specific criteria to be able to be granted an annual uh, contribution from the government. And so I'm pleased and I'm happy to announce that today as well. And we'll give further details as we seek to name the individuals who will benefit um, from this amazing initiative. But I just want to say to all the athletes in the room, we've been hearing you and the government of the Virgin Islands is committed to ensuring that we support you at all levels and we are putting our money where our mouth is because we see the talent that is in BVI and we want to be a part of your development and your training. So President Steve um, and the entire team, on behalf of the Ministry of Education, the Government of the Virgin Islands, I want to congratulate you as you seek to represent the territory at the Carifta Games in Grenada and we look forward to continuing uh, to support you uh, throughout the journey. Thank you. So President Steve, just to confirm, you've already received the check, so this is just this is just an exhibition um, of a big check, but the check has been received uh, in assistance to the association. And I will confirm it has been received. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, um, Honorable Minister. Um, President of ABI Athletics Association, Steve Augustine, Secretary General, Stephanie Ruspen. Athletes, coaches, good afternoon. On behalf of the President and Executive of the BVI Olympic Committee, I first offer my congratulations to all the athletes that have been selected to represent the territory at the Carifta Games to be held in Grenada. And secondly, to wish you all success to both athletes and coaches as they represent our territory over the Easter weekend. Um, as the minister, as I think as um, the Stephanie mentioned, the Carifta Games is not only the premier event in the Caribbean, but in the entire world. And it's being used as a model in other um, territories for youth athletes in athletics to allow them to qualify and participate in the Youth Olympics, so you are attending a very significant event. Um, I can remember looking at you myself as a 17-year-old representing the territory and the Carifta Games. I won't say how many years ago that was. Suffice to say, I did not win, but I did not come last. <laughs> <laughs> but I represented the territory with pride, and I expect you to do the same. So again. I wish you much success over the Easter weekend and continue to represent the territory with pride in all that you do on the field and off the field. Again, best wishes to you. A pleasant good afternoon to everyone once again. Um, I do recognize the protocol that's been established and I will follow through with my statements. I think it was just yesterday, perhaps, around the four o'clock hour, I thought about what is it that I can say today that I maybe haven't said before, 
and I went and I pulled my notes from last year, 2003, and I looked at them and I smiled because I said to myself, there's perhaps no better place to start than where you left off. But before I jump directly into some of the items that we're going to speak about today, um, I first want to say I feel good this afternoon. I looked at you guys this morning and I'm already trembling as I speak, but I already, I already have that character feeling flowing through my blood. I looked at you guys in the relays, I looked at you guys in the jumps, I looked at you guys in the throws, I looked at you guys as you interacted with the coaches, I felt totally inspired. And that's a good feeling, that is the feeling that's going to trickle through the entire BVI community within the upcoming hours, days, if that much at all, or definitely after they view the live and the information goes out later on today. I think General Secretary Stephanie Rospen touched on it. Um, let me also say how good you guys look um, in your BVI flag tee, is what we call it. Um, your, your shirt, your BVI shirt, your Puma gears, and we're gonna speak about that, but you look really good, you should feel really good. It's an accomplishment just to be here, and it'll definitely be an accomplishment to you guys in your athletic career as you make your way down to Grenada. Now, as I would typically do, I have just a few pointers here listed. I won't be too long. I know you guys have been with us the entire day. And for those of you guys who don't know, of course, we would have had our um, walkout session this morning. I think that started at 7. Um, attendance was at an all-time high. That was good. Um, and later on, we had the distribution of the uniforms that followed directly after. Um, that was a process, but I think everyone is fairly happy with the items that they received. And following that, you guys have been at it all day. You also had a workshop where you were introduced to some of the things to expect and to see and some of the things that you witness while you're at the Carifta Games. And here you are once again um, at the press conference as we will release the names to the public as to what BVI team or who makes up um, the BVI team. But jumping right into my notes, I always think that it's a good idea for you guys to have a little bit of history on the Carifta Games. And I wanted to see, and I won't put you guys on the spot, does anyone know, just off the top of your head, um, when the BVI Force competed um, in or at the Carifta Games? Does anyone want to take a guess? I see someone in the back. I'll give you a clue, it's in the 70s. Anyone wants to jump in there? 1972, not quite, but close enough, um, 76. Okay, and um, as always, um, there's a member in the room. Anyone wants to point out who that member is that would have been on that team in 76? Past president, Mr. Greenaway. That's correct. Um, I have a note here that lists that we got our first triple jump and long jump um, gold medals in 1992. Anyone wants to take a guess as to what, who that person would have been? Anyone? Long jump, triple jump? Anyone knows a fellow by the name of Brother Klein, Peter Klein? That name rings the bell. I encourage you guys to, to look him up. I think you can still find some stuff out there on the internet or speak with your coaches. And as I jump right into my other notes, within recent years, we've had some special things happening. And some of this I've spoken about before, but I think it's utterly important that I come back and I reiterate some of these things that we've spoken about before. So those of you who would have made the team last year, some of this might be a little repetitive, but for the team that is made up of a number of new athletes, I still think it's important that I go through some of this. So within recent years or just last year, there's a few special things that happened. And of course, you guys remember the performance of Jacaila Morton? Remember what she did last year? Right? She started off with a bronze. She got a silver, 1.60 meters, right? So we started creating some dots. She got that bronze, she got that silver, and she her she's here again on the team. I'm jumping some of what Ms. Russ will say, <laughs> but do I do apologize. But she's here again, and we connected some dots. Just follow my line of thought. Um, Kenyatta Great, and I want to call these names over and over all afternoon. Kenyatta Great, is she around? Is she here? 
You guys know what she did last year at the Carifta Games? Did she medal? She sure did. Anyone knows what medal she got? She got a silver medal, 2411. And she's not here, right? And I'm gonna to touch on that. We had some other outstanding accomplishments, and I'm not gonna list all, so please don't put me against the wall um, for not doing so, but people like Jaden Jackson, he went out there, he was a semi-finalist last year in the 200. Um, Josh Knight Farrington, you guys remember him last year? He went out there, 155, 79 in the 800. Lynn Chi's here with us this afternoon. Uh, 159 13 and I'm picking on these guys because these guys started to connect some dots and that is why some of them are, are here today. Um, Smichael, he's not here but you will see him when you get to Grenada and again he placed fifth last year at the Carifta Games 4702. Now to bring a further connection to what I'm trying to get at. Anyone knows a fellow by the name of Tyrese James? He competed last year at where? The Carifta Games, right? Is he here? Where is he at? All right. What about um, McCory Crab? Is he here? Competed last year at the Carifta Games? Mm, there seems to be some kind of trend with these names that I'm calling. What about Mekai George? Is he here? Did he compete at the Carifta Games? All right. What about Wanye Bell? You guys know that name? Is he around? Where is he? In college, he competed at the Carifta Games. What about Malik John? You guys know that name? Is he here? He competed where? The Carifta Games. What about Aria Smith? Is she here? No? Where is she? In college, she competed at where? You guys start to see the trend that, that's created with competing at the Carifta Games. There's a natural tendency to do well and to, to do well enough to make it off to school, to college. And that's a very important factor. And that is something that each one of you guys um, need to, to realize. I don't want to miss the names. Kaiba Dawson, you guys remember that fellow? Is he around? Where is he? Did he compete at the Carifta Games? And you guys are competing where now? At the Carifta Games. I can go on and on and on and on because BVI's list is a very extensive and long list. It's something that the BVI has done for years and we've continued to perform well over the years. Now, I know that some of the persons on the outside who are looking in, they will look at the team and when you look at the team, one of the first things that pops out to you is that yes, it is an under 20 team that's competing at the Carifta Games but when you look at the team, you tend to realize very early on that it's a young team. There's a lot of new faces on the team. As a matter of fact, I think on the 17 section of the, the team is very packed up. It's stacked up, as we say, on the track. And there's something very important I want to get out there as we speak about the makeup of the team and how young the team is. Because many, many years ago, when past chief coach um, Dak Samuels um, saw it within all of us because he played a role within every individual that's sitting here in one way or the other, especially the senior, well, I shouldn't say the senior, the older persons from athletics that are sitting in the room. When I first took the Wall Athletics, it was then called the IAAF Level 1 course, there was something that was taught to us that's called talent identification and talent development. Talent identification, perhaps the easier of the two processes, um, you look at the athletes with a, what we call a coach's eye and you can see the talent level of the athlete. Talent development is a process that requires time. So to those persons who are out there and they look at the team and they realize that it's a very young team, what you must understand from a scientific level or from a proven level is that the BVIAA is continually going through its talent identification and talent um, development processes. And that is where you guys come in. You're going to head on over to Grenada. You're going to compete in Grenada. You're going to return to the BVI. But when you return to the BVI with or without a medal, you will return with a lot and I reiterate the word a lot 
you're going to return with a lot of regional experience under your belt. And I guarantee you that in itself will propel you in your athletic careers as the years roll along. I have a note here that says that some of you guys have been at this for well over 10 years. I take a lot of pictures. You guys know me. I'm the first guy on the track, um, maybe not with a camera. Uh, we have the photographers around, but with a phone. I do quite a bit with my phone. So I have pictures of you guys from the time you were perhaps little toddlers. Some of you guys, Neil and I sent Jacqueline on Mother one the other day. Some of you guys have been, a, have been around a long time. And I want to, I say that to say this, I want you guys to realize and understand that athletics is a process. There's no magic wand. There's no book that's going to tell you do this, this, and this, and this is guaranteed to happen. And I say that to say you will have some high highs, and you will have some not so high highs. But in it all, remember while you're at the Crifter Games, you are indeed representing the BVI, so we expect you to carry yourself with pride. We expect you to treat your gears with pride, and we expect you to represent the BVI well. And when we say well, we mean well at all times. That is both at the track and off the track. Things such as maturity, strength, speed, agility, patience, again, those are all buzzwords in the athletic arena that has everything to do with your development processes and time. Again, to the character team traveling to Grenada, I ask you guys to approach the meet in Grenada with open arms, open eyes, the greatest sense of respect for your country, and I expect you guys to go there and do nothing other then perform at your very best. I wish you guys the greatest success. I expect that we will have some medalists that will return to the BVI. I will certainly be there, and we will certainly put the information out. The minister, I think we spoke briefly about um, the minister being there as well, um, and the executive members, we will be there. We will report to the BVI community in relation to your performances. We hold you guys um, in high regard. We expect only greatness from you guys. And again, I underline my statements in saying, I wish you guys nothing other than the very best as you head on over to Carifta and represent the BVI. I'm going to wind up there, but there's just a few things that I want to touch on before I officially close off. Is that to the general public who are out there who are viewing this live, I ask you guys, it's on Facebook. On the Big Athletics Association is sharing it on the athletics page. I ask you guys to support our athletes. Um, social media is essentially the new language of today. Um, the athletes see, the athlete they read, and trust me, they understand. And I ask you guys, whether or not you can physically be there or not, I ask you guys to support them um, on the various social media platforms because I guarantee you they do indeed follow. To the government of the Virgin Islands, of course, we were handed that very physically big check today, but it is not customary that we would have received the real check prior to receiving the big check. So I'm glad that, Minister, um, you flipped the script. You ensured that we got the real check first, um, and you were patient. We just spoke about patience, and she came today, and we officially did um, our handover to the public knows and realizes the contribution that the government has made. And Minister, um, I thank you for the contribution. We're going to use it wisely. And as always, we're going to ensure that we report um, to you and to the ministry in relation to every dollar that was spent in relation to the monies received. I can't finish speaking this afternoon without touching on our guests, our Puma uniform. Puma has continued to treat us extremely well. And I just want to put it out there while I have the forum to do so. Um, we're extremely happy with the gears that we've been getting. Um, we had so much gears in that one room at the, at the track. Um, you literally couldn't walk in there. And to the guys that came out and gave us some assistance in getting that room organized, we're extremely happy. I guess, I hope that you guys got all your gears today. You got your bags. I was there for a bit. 
Um, and you guys, you're going to look good. When you run, when you look good, you run good. And when you run good, you feel good. So great things are already happening. You guys look nice. You're going to look even nicer um, in your running attire down at the Curif over at the Curif Games. Um, to the BVIOC, um, we don't do much without your involvement. Um, Brother Black, as I typically call you, you're here with us today. Um, Mr. President Penn, um, he's our supportive of our efforts and I give you guys all the credit for what you've done for athletics and what you continue to do for athletics. Um, it's a process where unity is critically important to our growth. Uh, we don't get people at the Olympic podium or the World Championship podium as we just saw with someone like Chiron and we saw with Chantel in the finals at the Olympics and World Championships without first going through this process. So the fact that the government of the Virgin Islands um, supports this process and the fact that um, the BVOC supports us in our development process, that speaks, that speaks greatly in relation to the growth of BV Athletics. And with that, I'm extremely, I should say, our executive is extremely happy um, to recognize and realize that you guys are indeed on board. Um, we certainly couldn't do this by ourselves and we are very much appreciative of that. Um, to everyone else on the outskirts, to the parents, um, the coaches, you guys have been doing a wonderful job with these athletes. I encourage you to continue to do what you've been doing. Um, it's a unified approach. It can't be anything else. I was sitting with a parent, I believe it was just yesterday, um, following the meeting and I said, um, I told the parent, I want you to do something and I told the parent, look at the outside of the track and you're going to find a very, very um, strong correlation to athletes that do well. I'm not saying 100 percent, but I'm saying a great percentage of the athletes who do well have very supportive parents. So parents, I ask you to continue to support um, the athletes and coaches. Again, I, won't, I don't want to stop. I had the, the track clubs listed, Talent X, Sprint Tech, Raw Skills, Top Notch, um, Ambassadors. I hope I didn't miss any in between. Um, um, new, new Level Athletics. Which one? New Level Athletics. New Level Athletics. I mentioned Sprint Tech and um, um, yeah, Fast Lane. Um, you guys know who you are. It, it'll, I'll be here all afternoon if I have to call all the coaches' names, but you guys have been doing a wonderful job. Again, the BVIAA couldn't do this by themselves. The, the clubs and the coaches play an important role in developing our athletes, and again, um, we are indeed grateful. Thank you for listening. I've said quite a bit. I'm going to turn the mic back over to General Secretary Steph Stephanie ross -Kett. I'd like to say thank you to everyone for their remarks. Honorable Minister, Mr. Black, President Augustine, thank you all for your remarks towards this year's delegation. I would like to add one comment in that in addition to our major supporters, we've also had support from Ocean Conversion and I want to make special mention of them because this is a second year that they've committed to support especially the Carifta team and we would like to publicly tell them thank you so much for their continued partnership. There are many organizations that partner with us for various meets and various um, things and we just want to say a continued thank you to all who support BVI Athletics and your continued encouragement and we look forward to more and bigger partners as time progresses because that's one of our significant objectives is to really grow partners so the sport can continue to thrive. At this time, without any further ado, I am going to proceed to announcing officially the 2024 Carifta team that is heading to the 51st edition of the Carifta Games this year in Grenada. This event is going to be happening none other than next weekend, starting on March 30th and ending on April 2nd. So absolutely tune in to our Facebook page and other entities that are going to be broadcasting the meet. This is going to be the largest ever. There's going to be over 800 athletes competing from about 28 different countries in the Caribbean. And I know Team BVI is ready. Team BVI, we're ready, right? Yeah. All right, wonderful. So I would first like to introduce the team that is going to go with our athletes and support them from beginning to end and give them as much as they need to ensure that they have a successful meet. It may have its ups and downs, but no matter what, I want you to know you're going with a group that is 
going to look after you and take good care of you. So heading up our team this year, this year, we have our team manager who is going to be Mrs. Annabelle Skelton Malone. She's part of the coach instructor of BVI Athletics. The actual coaching team will be headed up by head coach Owen Telemac, AKA Coach Reds. He's gonna be supported by Coach Winston Potter, who is certainly no stranger to the world of athletics and international travel and competition. In addition, we will have Coach Matthias, who will support the process, Coach Karine Hodge, Coach Tarika Moses, and Sean Williams will be joining the team as our physiotherapy support. We have 25 athletes that will be attending, 22 are present today. Three are gonna meet us in Grenada coming from overseas. And I'm gonna begin our introduction with the under 17 athletes. Carifta Games has two divisions, under 17 and under 20. Under 17 is unique to our region. The rest of the world does under 18, but we see it fit for developmental reasons to continue to have under 17, which is followed by under 20. Beginning with the under 17 girls, we have Deniel Clark. Deniel is one of our jumpers at the game. She will be high jumping. We have <laughs> We have Jamelia Chambers who will also be contesting the high jump. We have Mackenzie Crabb, who will be competing in the 100 and the 200 meter dash. We have Michaela Logan, who will be part of the four by one on the 17 girls team. We have Romina Davis, who is going to be contesting the shot put and the discus. We have Shira Stout, who is gonna be contesting the long jump. For the under 17 boys, we have Jaheem Leonard Joseph, part of the 4x1 under 17 team. We have Mario Carter, who's going to contest the 1 and the 2. We have Ortney Gillins, who will be competing in the high jump. We have Shamal Donovan, member of the 4x1 relay team. Tiandre Fret, who will compete in the one and the 200 meters. And Tyreek Charles, who will compete in the high jump. As mentioned, we will have both a four by 100 under 17 girls and boys teams at this year Carifta Games. Moving on to our under 20. Our largest group comes from the under 20 females. And we have, first off, Amia Todman. <laughs> Amia will compete in the 100 meters. We have Asia McMaster, who will compete in the long jump. We have Jordan Thomas, who will compete in the 100 and the 200. We have Ja'Kyla Morton, <laughs> competing in the high jump. We have Palisa Caesar competing in the shot put and the discus. We have Shania Johnson, who will be part of the 4x1 team. We have Saviana Joseph competing in the shot put and the discus. And not with us here, we have one of our overseas athletes, Ms. Jatavia Williams who will compete in the 200 meters. Moving on to our under 20 males, we have Jabari Pemberton. <laughs> Jabari is competing in the octathlon. We have Jaden Jackson competing in the one. Jaden competes in the one and the two. We have Jonathan Lynch. Jonathan will compete in the 800, and coming from abroad, we have Andres Michael in the shot put and the discus, 
And we have Macquarie Crab in the 400 and the triple bowl. We will have a female on the 24 by 100 meter team, and we are endeavoring this year to hopefully have a 4 by 400 meter mixed relay. As you can see, we have an array of vertical, horizontal jumps. We have throws in both discus and shot, and we have sprinters and relays, and we're extremely excited. And that is the 2024 BVI national team that will travel to the Carifta Games in Grenada. Can we give them another round of applause? The team is slated to depart the territory next Thursday. Please keep them covered in your prayers and encouraged. And they will return right after the character games. And we are excited to see what this year will bring. Um, we are really grateful for everyone who is tuned in to the press conference, everyone who continues to support BVI Athletics. And we are excited for not only what's going to happen this year, we began with Wall Indoors a few weeks ago. We're now heading into the Carifta Games, and we have several other events coming up, including the 2024 Paris Olympics. And we are excited for what the rest of the year will bring. And so we thank you all for joining us at today's press conference. I want to thank the media for being here, joining us, assisting with streaming. And I'm going to allow time for media questions. And then after that, we will officially wrap up. So the floor is now open to the media before we bring this press conference to a close. Any media questions? Are we going to get on this? <laughs> yes, definitely. Well, By tomorrow. No, I'm saying I have a deadline, that's why. Yes. I'll try for tonight. Huh? I'll aim for tonight. Okay, just want to be sure. Yes. Go ahead, Ryan. Um, I just I have a, just a question um, to the minister uh, regarding the contribution uh, to the Athletics Association. And you spoke about going forward, there will be a set of athletes to benefit annually, but you say you won't really go into detail as yet. Can you just reveal the selection process of how you guys are going about the selection of these the athletes that will benefit from the monies annually? So cabinet has some specific criteria um, by which the athletes will have to meet that criteria in order to be selected and once they meet the criteria, they will be offered a financial contribution. So I don't have the details in front of me, but I did. We will be releasing um, further um, some information on it, but the, uh, the information has been officially passed by cabinet since last month, I believe it was, and we're seeking to go through the process of identifying the persons who have uh, sorted um, based on the associations and federations verification that they have indeed met the criteria to then be offered the contribution from the government of the Virgin Islands. Okay, and so I guess once that decision is made, it will be an official announcement to name the afternoon staff. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, to the President uh, of the team, speak on you know, the selection of the Athletes that we have here beforehand, I know generally in the previous years they've been the push to have a very, very large team. Um, this year, you know, we would have seen a selection of teams. I mentioned 25, 25 selected this year. Uh, what is the overall goal uh, from the athletes for this 20, 51st edition of the Caribbean Games? Well, to say anything other than going down to the Caribbean Games or going over to the Caribbean Games and returning with um, some medals um, would be shortcoming in my answer. But the fact of the matter is, um, yes, we do intend to um, secure some medal winning performances in Grenada, but we also intend, as I spoke about in my statements, to ensure that the next generation of athletes, they begin, uh, they get a chance to get their feet wet, because these are the very same athletes that will return in the under 17, on each category and on the 20 age category in years to come. And what we've also realized as an executive is that we've got some groupings of both male and female athletes. Um, as long as these athletes continue to progress their careers in athletics, 
they're going to be running and competing with and against each other for a very long time. And we find that the Carifta Games, as much as you may look at the elitist type performances at the Carifta Games, the fact of the matter is the Carifta Games is a development type meet. And the BVI is using that very same opportunity to ensure that we give our athletes a fair chance to go out and compete against the regional best in their developmental processes. Okay, my final question, I couldn't leave without asking because I know a person would ask the question as well too. We do, obviously, we, does, we don't have um, Deja as part of the team and I, I, I'm told, well, I don't know it's because of our scheduling, but I mean, person I want to ask, you know, considering you guys would officially publish her uh, qualification for the Curriculum Games, I think it was last month or so. Uh, just speak about that, the uh, absence of Deja Hodge in the team this year. So, we've been in constant communication with both Ms. Hodge and her, her mother, as, all, as we know, Tanya. Uh, who plays a critical role in um, Adesia's um, doings. And what we have gathered from speaking with um, Ms. Hodge is that Adesia, in this case, has a schedule that has been developed for her. Um, she is shooting to make some standards that are already out there for um, the Olympic Games, as well as other meets. And right now, that is where their focus is at. So because of conflicts in her scheduling, um, regarding how many and how often she competes, um, she has opted out of this year's Carifta Games, um, but she's still part of Team BVI and you will see her as the year rolls along in BVI Gears representing Team BVI. Okay, and, and she still has at least uh, another Carifta game or so if she chooses to uh, for next year, I believe, right? Yes. And you would appreciate, um, although I do believe we have um, world championships again next year. Mm -hmm. um, the Olympic Games is indeed this year, so you can appreciate the, um, the attention that went into the scheduling for Ms. Hodge, given the fact that it's an Olympic year. Any further questions? Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. let, me, let me start with the minister first. Congratulations on. Um, I can remember my question I was going to ask you, by the fact that I heard you providing funds for the various um, associations and all that. You mentioned the word elite athlete. What does that mean and how do people qualify for this elite funding? So of course, as I stated, uh, while I would have made an initial announcement um, regarding that program, I would use the opportunity at a later date to give the specific details of that program. But because we're here and because I know these athletes um, starting off at this level ultimately aim to uh, represent the Virgin Islands um, at Worlds and Olympics and Commonwealth and Pan Am and these sort of um, world activities, I wanted to let them know that it is not just a one-pronged approach. We're taking multiple steps in ensuring that we support athletes from the beginning to the end. And so while I would have announced um, that initiative, I will give further details because the specific criteria has been passed and it will be made public uh, with the assignment of the athletes who have met the criteria as well. So just give us some time um, and that will be forthcoming shortly. One last question. I think I had asked the Premier to look into something related to track and field, which is the medical room that hasn't been functional since the stadium went in in 2011. We had a brief conversation about it before. What is going to happen in that regard? Because a lot of these athletes training get injured. They don't have a place where they can have the requisite uh, injury prevention and rehabilitation. What is going to happen to that? Because as far as I know, it's a storeroom. OK, so um, I would respond to that by saying that it is something that I can look into. Um, it is the first time that I have specifically um, been uh, afforded the opportunity to hear about that. Uh, what I can say is that we have been uh, taking significant strides to ensure that funding is available. Uh, one of the main challenges why uh, sports and youth, when we consider the Department of Youth Affairs and Sports, uh, has not been working at optimal capacity is really because of lack of funding, right? Uh, I can say that when I started as minister in 2022, the budget for DYAS was $600,000. Uh, 
Um, in 2023, last year, we got it up to about $900,000. Uh, this year, in 2024, we're up to $2.1 million. And so I can say unequivocally that the Ministry of Education is committed to supporting youth and sports development. A part of that um, was uh, showcased here today in terms of BBI Athletics. But on to the facility side of it, which you would have mentioned, uh, in the budget process as well, uh, we have also under the Ministry's capital budget for the first time in a very long time an allotment of about $500,000 to go towards sporting facilities in the territory. So the team is meeting and seeking to see which facilities will be able to benefit from that funding. But unequivocally, uh, the Ministry of Education and the government of the Virgin Islands is fully supportive of sports um, in the territory. And we will seek to do what we can at this specific facility based on the matter that you have mentioned to address it in short order. Uh, just in case, Minister, you might have it might have slipped your mind. You and I had this conversation at the government house when you were being sworn in at one of the ceremonies. I did specifically mention this issue because I'd asked the premier. The premier said he was going to take it on. And I know it's something I would like to see. And I'm sure the association and the athletes would like to see. So we had the conversation. So I'm just trying to so just as I stated, as I stated, I do not recall the conversation. If I did, I would have stated that I did. However, I did say that I'm open to further discussing the matter. And I also took the opportunity to speak to some of the other areas that you've been championing for quite some time. Um, and so the ministry is hard at work. And we acknowledge the many challenges that plague our facilities. And we will seek to do whatever we can to continue to support athletics and other sporting uh, organizations in the territory. Your government has said that there would have been a sports policy in place by 2022. What is the status? I can say to you that currently uh, the, there is funding in the budget allotted to uh, move forward with uh, the sports policy. We have already started the youth policy uh, last month. And so in terms of the revision of the sports policy, uh, we have uh, funding uh, currently allocated and we're moving forward uh, with hopefully uh, through proposals um, from UNESCO, just like they support us with the youth policy, uh, to be able to get some support and forward in that mandate. And the, and the sports council? Yeah, so all of that is inclusive in the sports policy. You have to appreciate that while we have paperwork, a lot of the formalities in terms of action in them have not necessarily been met. And so it is my priority to ensure that we don't just create documents that sit on tables, but that we make sure that they are actionable um, and also that we don't just create opportunities where promises are made and we don't have the opportunity to execute. That's why as Minister I've been taking my time, we've been creating policies, we've been going to Cabinet and we've been uh, ensuring that we pass them on that level so that no matter who's in the seat, at least we'll have the opportunity to benefit from things that they've been asking for for a very long time. I know one of the things you've been asking for is to ensure that we have line item in the budget that speaks to sports. And so I'm happy to say as Minister of Education, I've been able to achieve that in 2023. Thank you. You're most welcome. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> okay, let me ask the President. You, we, I know based on your qualifying standards, you have 10 athletes, you announced 25. Um, how is this team compared to last year? One. And uh, how is this team, first of all, let me, let me take them one at a time. How is this team compared to last year when you brought back two medals? Because I think you said you are looking for some medals. Well, um, um, Sportsman Greenway, of course, you know that um, Jacqueline, who was there last year, um, she's back with us. Uh, we have some other hopefuls in there. We've got some sprinters that have been coming along very nicely. Uh, we had a number of fifth place positions last year. Those athletes are back again. Uh, we did rather well in the relays with some fifth place um, positions. A national record was developed as well. And we're out to achieve um, the same or even greater. So I couldn't tell you anything other than, than just that. It's a smaller team, um, but in dynamics and in performance, I think we're just as equipped as we was last year um, to go to Grenada and do the very same thing. So. Okay, your selection, uh, your, I know you probably have a selection committee. How did it go about and who are the members of your selection committee in coming up with the team? Um, so what we have done, um, of course you spoke about the qualifiers. 
um, who we've made um, known through social media. We've put that information out. And we've also sat and we've looked at, at those who are rather close to the qualifying standards and made a determination um, amongst ourselves in relation to their development as to whether or not the Carifta Games uh, would be beneficial to their um, athletic progress. And those who are just outside the qualifying standards, um, that is the basis of which um, they are sitting here before us today. Um, and of course, yes, the relays, um, getting those athletes to compete with each other um, based on the fact that um, World Juniors and meets of that type uh, still um, meets that the association looks to project to doing very well at. And we see the Carifta Games as a development process towards events such as those. And who's on the selection committee? The selection committee, we use the members of the executive, which is uh, made up of myself, um, uh, Mr. Tottenham, Mr. Henry, um, my general set, and we've kept um, a record of the performances. I missed someone else. No, I'm saying third party. And we also had a third party come in and do some evaluation of um, some of the contentious decisions that we were looking at just to make sure that our evaluation process was kept clear and clean. And was the third party were um, involved? The, the third party, the for obvious reason, will remain unknown um, to the general public. Um, but I assure you, um, that person came and they were very critical in the decision-making processes. Thank you. I, I, don't, I don't really have much more to say. Thank you. <laughs> I would like, oh, one, one thing I would like to say, one thing I would like to say to the athletes, I will be in Grenada um, doing some radio reports. Please, when you finish, I'm going to interview you. Oh, you know, um, I noticed something last year which I was disappointed in. One of the athletes, the, the public relations officer, wanted to speak to the athlete, and that athlete stormed off and did not talk to him. Please, I don't want to see that. I'm speaking on radio. I'll tell you straight up, I'll call out your name. If you saw, if, because you are representing our country, I might not be the only one speaking to you. There might be somebody else from around the region who will be speaking to you. And if you have displayed that kind of behavior, they are going to measure the BVI by your behavior. So please, I would, um, I would be there to ask you some, nothing difficult, just some questions so you could be a part of the report and people in the BVI can hear your voices after your event because we know everybody going to be watching um, Sports Max, but Sports Max ain't going to have on BVI athletes. Now, CBN 90.9 FM will have on BVI athletes. Three reports on um, March 30th to April 1st at 9 a.m., 2 p.m., and 9.15 p.m. Can I get a picture of the team, please? Yeah. All right. So we are officially ending today's press conference. Again, I say thank you to all who have joined us, including thank you to the media. And all the best to the team. Remember sportsmanship, respect, and discipline.